Hello and welcome. You have tuned into headlines now with me, Linda Hercules. Before we move into all the stories in detail, let's take a quick look at the top headlines. Crucial talks between Karnataka and Tamil Nadu fail as Karnataka sticks to its stand of not releasing its water to Tamil Nadu. GK Vasan appeals to the Prime Minister to force Karnataka to release water to Tamil Nadu. Law Minister Salman Kurshid rejects corruption allegations, says Kajriwal will be taken care of in due course of time. Allahabad High Court admits a PIL seeking the Prime Minister's office to order a probe into the land deals between Robert Vadra and DLF. Left Front leaders walk out of the Joint Parliamentary Committee meet on the 2G scam, demanding the Prime Minister and the Finance Minister to depose as witnesses. Delhi Police arrest three Indian Mujahideen operatives in connection with the August 1st Pune blast case. Three London Olympic medalists honoured in Chennai with cash awards of 5 lakh rupees each. And News in detail. Crucial talks to evolve a consensus between Karnataka and Tamil Nadu over sharing Kaveri river waters have failed, with upstream Karnataka refusing to accept a decision of the Kaveri Monitoring Committee that it release 8.8 .8 TMC of water from the 15th of October till the 31st. Karnataka told the committee today that it has no water to release to Tamil Nadu. The Kaveri Monitoring Committee has in it officials from both the states and also from Kerala and Puducherry and the Ministry of Water Resources. It has to report on the issue to the Kaveri Regulatory Authority headed by the Prime Minister, which had directed Karnataka on the 19th of September to release 9,000 cusacks of Kaveri water to Tamil Nadu till the 15th of October. Karnataka reluctantly began to do so on the 29th of September but stopped on Monday, prompting Tamil Nadu to go to the Supreme Court. Concerned over the plight of Tamil Nadu farmers as a fallout of the Kaveri crisis, Union Shipping Minister G.K. Vasan appealed to Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh to impress upon Karnataka to release water from its dams to Tamil Nadu to save the Samba crops. Vasan said that the Prime Minister gave a patient hearing and assured that the issue will definitely be discussed so that justice is done. He observed that Tamil Nadu has witnessed 50% less rainfall this year as compared to last year's adding that if the situation continued in the Delta region, there is a danger of drought. He stated that Karnataka should abide by the ruling of the Prime Minister as head of the Kaveri River Authority, asking it to release 9,000 cusacks of water, which was endorsed by the Supreme Court. After opposing FDI in multi-brand retail, key UPA constituent DMK today remained evasive on increasing the cap on foreign investment in insurance sector. We always support workers' struggles, was the terse reply by the party chief M. Karnanadi when reporters sought his response to the recent cabinet move. After the BJP boycotted the Joint Parliamentary Committee meet on the 2G scam, the left front leaders also walked out of the meeting. CPI leader Gurudas Das Gupta walked out of the meeting demanding that Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh and Finance Minister P. Chidamaram depose as witnesses in the case. The Bahujan Samaj Party and the Samajwadi Party have also supported the left leader's decision. Expressing similar sentiments, another BJP member said that there was no relevance in attending the meeting where former additional secretary of the Department of Economic Affairs, Sindhu Shri Khullar, will appear. BJP members had stormed out of the meetings of JPC on the 22nd of August and the 18th of September, charging panel chief P.C. Chako with being biased on accusing Congress members of using foul language. We had demanded the JPC in order to uncover the truth. The Congress party and the chairman of the JPC, who is a member of the Congress party, is planning to or is trying to use the JPC to cover up the truth. This is not acceptable to us. And therefore, in my letter to him today, I have said clearly that until he decides on the final list of witnesses and comes before the committee, there is no point in our attending the meetings of the JPC. That is our final stand. And I have sent a copy of this letter to the Honorable Speaker asking him, her, to intervene in the matter. I think it's very unfortunate. The JPC is something that was brought in by demand of the opposition. Uh, and it was done so that uh, everybody will come to know the truth. Now that the truth is coming out in the report, and the, I think the truth is not what the opposition wanted it to be, but what the truth actually is. They were actually looking for ways to boycott this. And these two excuses of wanting to call the finance minister and the prime minister are not uh, are not feasible excuses because finance minister's role in 2G has already been cleared by the Supreme Court and the JPC cannot know more than the Supreme Court does. And secondly, the prime minister neither had a direct or indirect role in this, so calling him was only to create a controversy and score political points rather than actually add 
to anything in the JPC. So I think it's a political step. It's unfortunate. But this was the design of the BJP. From the beginning, they wanted to politicize the whole thing. They wanted the JPC to be a political rather than a neutral parliamentary body. When they could not succeed in politicizing it, they wanted to, they have to resign now and therefore come out and show as if the report is now biased. Moving on, Law Minister Salman Kurshid has stridently rejected allegations that an NGO headed by him and run by his wife siphoned off lakhs of money meant for physically challenged people in his home state of Uttar Pradesh. The minister said that he plans to take Hindi TV channel Laj Tak to court for making those accusations. About former activist Sarvan Kejriwal, who cited the TV channel Sting to demand the minister's resignation, he said that he did not think that Mr. Kejriwal deserved a reply from anybody, but that the former social activist will be taken care of in due course of time. An undeterred Kejriwal did not miss a beat as he hit back, saying the matter was such that it does not need an inquiry and that Salman Kurshid should be dismissed. Days after they launched a new political party, former activists Prashant Bhushan and Arvind Kejriwal warned that they would expose two powerful people for corruption. The first was Robert Vadra, the son-in-law of Congress President Sonia Gandhi. The second is to be outed, they say, on the Tuesday, 16th of October. The Congress is striking back. It has asked for an inquiry into how a tea plantation in Himachal Pradesh was show sold to Mr. Bhushan two years ago in alleged violations of local laws, where land cannot be owned by non-residents. इस तरह से भूषण परिवार को पालमपुर में जगह दी गई चार दशमलव अड़सठ एकड़ जगह जो है उनको सारे नियम तोड़ के दी गई और कांग्रेस के विधायक सुधीर शर्मा ने पूरा मामला ही उठाया कांग्रेस के दूसरे विधायक मुकेश अग्निहोत्री ने पूरा ये मामला उठाया लेकिन इसका ना कोई जवाब आ रहा है ना कोई जू रेंग रही है ये करीब सात से आठ करोड़ रूपये के बीच की जमीन है जो कुछ लाख में इनको दे दी गई और वहाँ हिमाचली जो है उसको भी अधिकार नहीं है कि टी गार्डन का लैंड किसी को दिया जाए इन्होंने एजुकेशनल सोसाइटी के नाम पे उस जमीन को लिया और एजुकेशनल सोसाइटी के नाम पे उस जमीन को लेके वहाँ अभी तक कोई स्कूल नहीं चल रहा जब कितने दिन हो गए तो उसका जो पर्पज वो भी नहीं पूरा हो रहा टी गार्डन की लैंड भी दी जा रही है और सस्ती लैंड दी जा रही है और इसके अलावा जो है सारी तरह से नियमों को तोड़ा गया बिल्कुल क्लीन ट्रांजेक्शन है सरकार उसकी जाँच कराए पूरी जांच कराए हम कोई ही उल्टा सीधा काम नहीं करते हैं हर चीज कानून के हिसाब से करते हैं सरकार पूरी जांच कराए हमें बिल्कुल कोई एतराज नहीं है सरकार जांच कराए ना उनके पास सारी जांच है जांच कराए एक कोई एक चीज बिल्कुल साफ है कोई गलत काम नहीं हुआ है हमारे किसी काम में कोई गलत काम नहीं दिखा सकते the Lucknow bench of the Allahabad High Court has admitted a public interest litigation seeking the Prime Minister's office to order a probe into the land deals between businessman and son-in-law of Congress President Sonia Gandhi and reality giant DLF. The PIL was filed by Nutan Thakur, who runs an NGO two days ago. The Prime Minister's office has been made a party in the petition and not Mr. Vadra. The court will hear the case on the 21st of November and has given three weeks to the centre to file objections. ये पी आई एल डी एल एफ और रॉबर्ट वाड्रा के बीच में जो एलिगेशन लगाए जा रहे हैं कि सरकार का मिस यूज किया गया और रॉबर्ट वाड्रा के जरिए डी एल एफ कंपनी ने काफी फायदा कमाया है तो इसकी इन्वेस्टिगेशन को लेके फाइल की गई थी कि ये पूरा मैटर जो आ रहा है इसकी जांच कराई जाए जवाब देने के लिए टाइम मांग लिया गया कि इस पे हम अपना जवाब देना चाहते तो कोर्ट ने तीन हफ्ते का समय दिया है इसके लिए और अगली सुनवाई की तारीख इक्कीस नवम्बर तय की है Meanwhile, Chief Minister of Himachal Pradesh, Prem Kumar Dumal, said that the state government should not be dragged into the property row involving Priyanka Gandhi Vadra, the daughter of the Congress Party Chief Sonia Gandhi. तो ये झगड़ा किसी एक पार्टी का और दूसरी पार्टी का जो है इसमें प्रदेश सरकार को कुछ इतना व्यर्थ की बात है। कुछ लोग कहते हैं प्रियंका वाड्रा को क्यों जमीन दी क्यों कहाँ दी? वो 2007 में 10 अगस्त 2007 को जमीन दी गई जब कांग्रेस सरकार यहाँ पे थी 4104 स्क्वायर मीटर जमीन का क्षेत्रफल है मकान बनाने के लिए और हॉर्टिकल्चर पर्पस के लिए इसलिए कुछ लोग इसको मुद्दा बना रहे हैं ये कोई मुद्दा है नहीं 118 के अधीन उनको अनुमति दी गई है उसमें उन्होंने जमीन खरीदी है तो मुझे लगता है राजनीतिक लड़ाई इन छोटी छोटी बातों पर क्यों लड़ी जा रही है कोई एजुकेशन ट्रस्ट अगर काम कर रहा है उसके लिए या प्रियंका वाड्रा 
नेहरू गांधी खानदान परिवार की बेटी अगर मकान बना रही है तो उसमें इतना झगड़ा खड़ा करने की कोई मुझे औचित्य नजर नहीं आता